Hi, welcome to Thoist. Today I've got a little project for you which is great for little babies or even toddlers or even six-year-olds, you know, if they want to go to bed and they just like something to hold on to. It's a little dinosaur taggy and it's just made with scrap fabric backed with quite a nice fleece. I mean, this is a um, knitted effect fleece. What we'll do is we'll provide you with a template. It'll be in the description below. And all you need to do is draw around your template onto a piece of cotton fabric. Let's just pop him over there on the wrong side of it and cut that fabric out with about a five or six seam allowance. Now, before you go any further, what you need to do is you need to make the tags to go on your dinosaur. So if you take a piece of, fabri uh, blah, 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 take a piece of fabric that is about three and a half, four centimetres by about 12 centimetres long, fold it in half right sides together and just stitch oh. let's just finger press it a minute because uh, it doesn't want to play ball stitch down that long edge oh. with about a 5mm seam allowance and you'll need about 12 of these, so I'll just do you another one. Again, just fold it in half right sides together. Pop it under your foot. And then point turners. I don't know what I've done with my point. Oh, here it is. Most amazing thing on the planet, you can just pop them in there, hook your fabric onto it and pull it back through. You don't need a point turner for this project, but it does make life much quicker. And as I say, because you're going to have about 12 of these tags to turn out, you might get fed up of them by about the third one. I'm just going to pop the end out of that. And what I'm going to do is almost press that seam against a knitting needle so that when you flatten it out, Your seam runs along the middle, not along the edge. Do the same with this one. And then just fold them in half. So the seam is on the inside. Here's the others that I've made. And then if you take your dinosaur shape, what you need to do is Bear in mind that you've got this 6mm seam allowance. So you need to flip him over and then just pin your tags Oh, actually that's another thing I was going to tell you. What you can do is if you just slightly offset that it fills a wider area so you don't get the gaps between the tags. We'll just pin these here. Now, I've said you need about 12 of these. That was a lie. You need about 10 of these. And this is why I say it's great for using up scraps of fabric, because you can just cut them into strips, turn them into tags. If you don't have matching scraps of fabric to go with your base fabric, then you can just use like gross grain ribbon 
but something that's fairly sturdy because the whole point of a, a taggy is that you know kids like to pull on them and drool over them so you want it to be fairly hard wearing and they're all pinned in place and then what you're going to do is you're just going to run a, a stay stitch line along here so you can take those pins out in a sec My domestic science teacher told me you should never turn the flywheel in the opposite direction and to this day I don't know why but I always feel really bad if I do. that's done is it's just held your tags in place on your fabric so that you can take the pins out and then cut yourself a piece of fleece again I've picked the same color fabric as I have cutting that just because I like to make it really difficult for you to see what I'm doing And the fleece will obviously have a certain amount of stretch on it because of the nature of the fabric, um, which is why I haven't bothered cutting the outline. The cotton isn't going to stretch as you're sewing it. The fleece can just sit there in the background and be sewn upon, and then you can just trim it afterwards. It's much easier doing it this way than trying to keep continually line up the edges of your fabric. And I don't know what sort of dinosaur this is. It's actually more of a rhino than a dinosaur, if I'm honest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all the way around here. But I'm just going to leave um, probably his inside leg open because it's a nice straight seam to turn in and slip stitch. Oh, the other thing I should say as well is one thing I have noticed when, when you're working with stretch fabrics is I've actually got a purple tip needle in here, which is designed for sewing stretch fabrics. It prevents skip stitches. And they work beautifully. Also, the other thing is, if you put your pins in your work perpendicular to the seam, means you don't have to keep taking them out as you sew. When you come to a point, make sure your needle's in. Lift the foot and pivot your work. And then when you get to the point where your tags are, just make sure that you run your sewing line inside that original stay stitch line so that you don't get any ugly stitches seen. It doesn't have to be far inside. To be honest, you can run it exactly on that line, it'll be fine. tip of his tail
And then when you get back to his leg, just sew about three or four stitches down from that corner. But leave a gap so it can be turned right side out. So let's take all my pins out. And of course, you, you're not confined to this shape. You can sketch out your own dinosaur shape or any weird animal, really. But what I would suggest is when you trim it, if you're trimming a curve, you use pinking shears. Also, you'll find when you're you know, just trimming up this top edge, you have got multiple layers of fabric to get through. That's the trickiest part. My worry is, when I do anything like this, is I'm going to do it in such a hurry that I'm going to cut right through my stitches, which has been known to happen. It's right, there is a bin over there. I'm not just chucking it on the floor because I'm not in my own house. Um, you will just need to clip the corners of the tops of the legs, the bottom of the tail and under his chin, but that should be about it. And then remember where you've put your turning gap. Grab a tag. And pull your dinosaur the right way out. like so. Make sure his face and limbs are all turned out. And ideally, because this is cotton and fleece and, you know, really quite simply made, this can be popped in the wash, you know, every other day. If you do have a, a child that's teething or just dribbling or just sleeping with it or wiping their nose on it, you should be able to pop it in the wash in the morning and it will be dry again by the evening. Ooh. And just turn out all the little points with a fairly chunky knitting needle because you don't want it to go through the fabric. Finger press out that seam and then all you will do here is just turn in these raw edges. Pop a pin in there. and then we'll top stitch all the way around it. Now normally I would top stitch so I'd got a green thread at the top and an orange thread at the bottom, uh, but I'm just gonna stay in white. I'm not gonna top stitch the whole thing, but what I am gonna show you is a tip that I discovered, and I don't know how I never discovered it before. On most sewing machines, you have um, a dial for your zigzag stitch. So what you'll find is, and if you watch the needle, as you turn your dial, your needle will move to the left, depending on the width of the stitch. 
So I've set it on about four. And what that means is you can sew your seam. Normally when I sew anything on the edge, the bulk of the fabric is on the outside. This time I'm going to sew it so the bulk of the fabric is on the inside. I'm going to line up my seam to the, the left-hand side of the foot. And because the needle is now over to the left, you can get a much more accurate narrow seam because most of your fabric is being held under the foot. I do have to take that pin out because it's going to get in the way. Check both edges, ed edges, edges are folded in. And I won't do it all, but you can see here that you've got, well, you can't see here at all, you've got a nice even seam, even border as it were. So on the finished article here, you've got that line around the outside that defines the shape of it. So it does mean that it doesn't matter how much it gets pulled about and scrumpled up into a ball and, you know, dribbled on, you can still flatten it out. You've still got your recognizable dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur shape. So it's a great little project. You can do it any size you want, any shape you want. Um, and it's just a nice way of using up scraps, colourful scraps, and making something for your child instead of going out and buying it. You've got friends that have got new children on the way. You've got a toddler that struggles to sleep because they haven't got a favourite blanket. This is a really nice idea for them. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will join us again very soon. We'll have some more sewing videos for you. Um, but in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Take care. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by the Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.